bright duty every student matters two objects each of mass 1.5 kilograms let the mass of first object be m1 let the mass of second object be m2 and the masses are equal so 1.5 kilograms each that means both the masses are of 1.5 kilogram they are moving in the straight line but in opposite directions so let us assume this is an object 1 this is object 2 they are moving in the opposite direction example this is moving in this direction towards right and this is coming towards left so they are moving along the same line but in different directions the velocity of each object is 2.5 meter per second so the initial velocity let the initial velocity of first object be u1 the initial object velocity of second object be u2 both of the objects are moving with an initial velocity of 2.5 meter per second right before the collision during which they stick together they are sticking together what will be the velocity of the combined object after collision right we are asked to calculate the velocity of now the mass which has been formed by sticking these two objects together so when these objects have stuck together that means they will be having a common final velocity which we represent with small v got it and this is what we need to calculate now we know the law of conservation of momentum states that m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 this is the total initial momentum of both the objects before the collision and this is the total final momentum of both the objects after the collision right we know the values let us place right mass of first object is 1.5 multiply by initial velocity is 2.5 plus again mass of second object is 1.5 and the velocity of second object is also 2.5 initial velocity now we have taken that the velocity of both the objects the final velocity will be same because now these objects have been connected into one so we have taken the velocity to be v so it becomes m1 plus m2 and that v we have taken to be common got it so now we will just calculate this we will see that this is equal to what dividing it with 10 dividing it with 10 right so this comes out to be 15 into 25 divide by 100 plus same way 15 into 25 divide by 100 is equal to mass of first was 1.5 then mass of second was again 1.5 multiply by v right so this is what we need to calculate now before collision the total momentum of these two objects important thing we need to relate is that they are coming in the opposite direction so when they are coming in the opposite direction the velocity because it is in the opposite direction it will be taken as negative this is the important thing we need to relate that because they are in the opposite direction one velocity if taken to be positive the another we need to take in negative so this becomes negative and positive and negative ultimately becomes negative in between and since we have the same values so this positive and negative they will cancel out each other and this will become to be zero now this is the most important thing that we need to remember in this question that the velocity is they are in the same line but in the opposite direction so if we are taking the velocity of one object to be in positive then of course the second object because the direction is all together opposite needs to be minus clear so now we get 3v is equal to 0 or v is equal to 
zero. What does it mean? That example, there are two balls which are or two objects. They are coming in the opposite direct in the opposite direction. They are coming with the same velocity, and once they collide each other, they will stop there and then only. They are not going to move after getting combined. And why? Because the final velocity of both, which is taken to be common, it is coming out to be zero. Got it? So this is the most important thing you need to remember in this question that the velocity, because they are equal and opposite, one is positive, one is negative, cancelling out each other, becoming zero. Fine? Correct? Let us see the next question. Now, according to the third law of motion, when we push on an object, the object pushes back on us. Of course, this we have studied. Correct? With an equal and opposite force. Now, if the object is a massive truck parked along the roadside, it will probably not move. Right? A student justifies this by answering that the two equal and opposite forces, they are cancelling it out each other. So, comment on this logic and explain why the truck is not moving. Now, we know that this is a massive truck. The mass of the truck is too much, right? So, because of that greater mass, we know that this truck must be having a great inertia. So, if a small force is applied on the truck, then in that case, the truck is of course not going to move. It will remain at this particular state of rest only. In order to move this truck, we need to apply a large amount of force, right? Which needs to be greater than the inertia of that particular truck so as to overcome the inertia and then that large amount of unbalanced force will only be able to move the truck. Got it? Next, let us see the next question. A hockey ball of mass 200 grams. The mass of the hockey ball is given to us in the question. Right, this is 200 grams. Mass is given. The mass of the hockey ball is 200 grams traveling at 10 meter per second. Right, so let us see what exactly is given to us in the question. The mass of the ball is 200 grams. Converting it into kilograms, we will get 200 upon 1000 kilograms coming out to be 0.2 kilograms. Right? Traveling at 10 meter per second. So, the initial velocity of hockey ball is given to be 10 meter per second, which is represented by small u, is struck by a hockey stick so as to return it along its original path with a velocity of 5 meter per second. So, now the final velocity is given to be 5 meter per second. But important thing, once again, that we have just studied in the above question, that it is returning along its original path. So, if it is returning along its original path, that means now the direction of the motion of this ball is opposite, because of which we will take it to be minus 5 meter per second. Now, calculate the change of momentum occurred in the motion of the hockey ball by the force applied by the hockey stick. What we need to calculate is, we need to calculate the change of momentum. Now, change of momentum is basically what? Final momentum minus initial momentum. That will be the change in momentum. So, what we are required to calculate is simply the final momentum. We know that the final momentum is given by the formula mass into final velocity minus initial momentum will be calculated by the formula mass into initial velocity. Right? So, the mass, initial velocity, final velocity, everything is given to us in the question. We just need to put the values. So, mass is 0.2 into final velocity is minus 5. 
minus the mass is 0 0.2 once again and the initial velocity was 10. So, this cancel out, right? And this cancel out, which is the, we get minus 1 minus 2, which comes out to be, this is the change in momentum that we are calculating. We are calculating the difference. So, it comes out to be 3. This is minus 3 kilogram meter per second. This is the SI unit of momentum, right? We calculated the final momentum, right? We calculated the initial momentum and simply we saw that the change in momentum was 3 kilogram meter per second. Got it? Fine. Now, let us see the next question. Now, in this question, what the examiner is saying is a bullet of mass. A bullet of mass 10 grams traveling horizontally with a velocity of 150 meter per second strikes a stationary wooden block and comes to rest in 0 0.03 seconds. Right. So, let us see and write what is given in the question. The mass of the bullet is given out to be 10 grams, right, which comes out to be 10 upon 1000 kilograms or 0 0.01 kilograms. It is traveling with a velocity of 150 meter per second. So, that will be its initial velocity with which the bullet is traveling, which is represented by small u and it comes to rest. That means its final velocity is given to be 0. And how much time is it taking? It is taking a time of 0. 0.03 second. Now, the examiner wants us to calculate the distance of penetration of the bullet into the block. That means, we have to calculate by what distance this bullet will be penetrated into the wooden block. Also, calculate the magnitude or the amount of force exerted by the wooden block on the bullet. So, the force exerted it all is also needs to be calculated, right? So, now in order to calculate S or to calculate F in both the cases, we will be requiring first of all the value of A that is acceleration. So, let us find out the acceleration and we know that acceleration is equal to V minus U upon T. This is by first equation of motion which said that v is equal to u plus a t. Now, acceleration is equal to v. Final velocity is given to us in the question to be 0. Initial velocity is 150 divided by time is 0 0.03 second. So, now the acceleration comes out to be minus 150 upon 0 0.03 Removing the decimal, multiplying it with 100, I will get the acceleration to be minus 5000 meter per second square. This is the acceleration with which this particular bullet was moving. Right? Fine. Acceleration minus, we already know, retardation. Okay? So, now, once I have got acceleration, now I can calculate the distance by the equation of motion, third one, v square is equal to u square plus 2s. This is as per third equation of motion. Now, v, the value is given out to be 0, u square is 150, I will make it the square of it, plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration is minus 5000 meter per second square, multiply by s. So, now, this comes out to be 0 is equal to 150 into 150 plus and minus will become minus 10,000 S. So, taking 10,000 on the other side, 10,000 S is equal to 22500. So, S will be equal to 22500 divided by 10,000 coming out to be 2. 0.25 meter. So, this will be the 
distance traveled by the bullet while it goes inside the block. Now, we know the acceleration. So, now we will calculate the force. The formula for force is m into a. The mass of the bullet is given to us to be 0 0.01 kilogram multiply the acceleration of the bullet was minus 5000 meter per second square removing the decimal i will get 1 upon 100 multiply by minus 5000 which comes out to be cancelling the zeros minus 50 newton this is the force which is exerted and the minus sign shows that it is an opposite force or the force is acted on the in the opposite direction clear fine let us see the next question now in this question what we are going to do is an object of mass 1 kilogram traveling in a straight line with a velocity of 10 meter per second collides with and sticks to a stationary wooden block of mass 5 kilograms. So, first of all, let the mass of first object be taken as m1, which is given to us to be 1 kilogram, right? It is moving with a velocity of 10 meter per second. Let this be the initial velocity of this object represented by u1, given to be 10 meter per second. Let the mass of the wooden block be m2 and this is given to be 5 kilograms, right? Now, the wooden block was stationary. So, let the initial velocity of wooden block be u2. Being stationary, it will be 0, right? Now, then they both move off together in the same straight line. And if they are moving together, that means their final velocity is going to be remaining the same taken to be v rather than v1 v2 because they are same calculate the total momentum just before the impact and just after the impact first of all what we need to find 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 is to find the total momentum this is the first part that we are going to find total momentum before the impact. Now, before the impact, the momentum will be the initial momentum of the first object, which is m1 u1, plus the initial momentum of the second object, that is m2 u2. Putting the values, we will get m1 is 1 kilogram, multiply by initial velocity was 10 meter per second, plus m2 was 5, initial velocity was 0. So, this becomes 0 and the total initial momentum becomes 10. What is the unit of momentum? Kilogram meter per second. So, this will be the initial momentum of both the objects before the impact. So, now second part is we have to calculate the total momentum after the impact. So, when we are calculating the total momentum after the impact that means it will be the sum total of the momentum final momentum of the first object which is m1 v i am taking v because common velocity we have already understood plus m2 v so it will be equal to m1 plus m2 into v v we are not given the value m1 we are given to be 1 kilogram m2 we are given to be the mass was given to be 5 kilogram so this becomes 6 v right 6 v this is the second thing and now first of all we will be requiring the value of final velocity and how we are going to do it we know the formula for law of conservation of energy m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. This is the total initial momentum which we have calculated to be 10 and this is the sum total of the 
both the final momentum, the value is calculated to be 6V. So, from here we get the value of V to be 10 by 6 which comes out to be 1.67 meter per second. So, this will be the total common velocity of both these objects, right? Clear? Next question. Now, the question says that an object of mass 100 kilograms, an object is given to us whose mass is 100 kilograms is accelerated uniformly from a velocity of 5 meter per second to 8 meter per second in 6 seconds. So, the mass of the object is given to be 100 kilograms. The initial velocity represented by small u is given to be 5 meter per second. The final velocity is represented by small v given to be 8 meter per second and the time is given to be 6 second. Calculate the initial and final momentum of the object. So, first thing the initial momentum is given by the formula mu. The final momentum is given by the formula mv. Simply multiplying the values m is 100 multiplied by u is 5 is comes out to be 500. The unit is kilogram meter per second. Mass into final velocity will be final momentum. The mass is again 100. Final momentum calculation by multiplying it with final velocity which is 8 comes out to be 800 kilogram meter per second. Then also find the magnitude of the force exerted on the object. Now we know that the force is calculated by F is equal to m into A where A is the acceleration. This is as per Newton's second law but we do not know the A. So, we will put V minus U upon T instead of A because of the first equation of motion. Now, placing the values we will get force is equal to mass is given to be 100, V is 8, U initial velocity is 5 divided by time is 6. This comes out to be 100 multiplied by 3 by 6. Cancelling it out, we will get the force is equal to 5, sorry, this is 50 Newton. This is the force which will be exerted. Simple, right? These type of questions now we have done previously also. So, now I think you will be feeling more comfortable doing these questions, no? Now, in next question, just try to relate what the question is saying. The question is very, very long seemingly, but the answer is very interesting. It is a good question. Let us see what exactly they are asking. Akhtar, Kiran and Rahul, these were the three people riding in a motor car that was moving with a high velocity on an expressway. When an insect hit the windshield and got stuck on the windscreen. Now, Akhtar and Kiran started pondering, they started thinking over the situation. Kiran suggested that the insect suffered a greater change in momentum as compared to the momentum of the motor car. This is what Kiran thought. Now, the opinion of Kiran was that insect suffered a greater change in momentum as compared to the change in momentum of the motor car, the insect has suffered greater change in momentum and she had a reason. What? Because the change in the velocity of the insect was much more than that of the motor car. Akhtar said that since the motor car was moving with a larger velocity, it exerted a larger force on the insect and as a result, the insect died. This is what Akhtar said. Now, the third boy sitting in the car has his own viewpoint. Let us see what he thought over the matter. Rahul, while putting an entirely new explanation, said that both the motor car and the insect experienced the same force and change in their momentum. Comment on these suggestions. Now, we have studied all the things, Newton's laws and law of conservation of momentum. 
based on that we will just see who among them is right first of all based on law of conservation of momentum we know that the total initial momentum is always equal to the total final momentum of two objects so if that is the case then in that case the suggestion of kiran is wrong why because the change in momentum of both the total impact is going to remain the same right similarly akhtar what did he say he said that the car has exerted a larger force but as per the newton's third law we know that action and reaction are equal and opposite so based on this akhtar is also wrong rahul is correct in this case because he thoroughly and properly said according to newton's third law of motion that the same force and the same change of momentum will be there in both the car and the insect right but the difference between this is maybe because the insect is very smaller mass organism having a very small mass the insect has a very small mass because of which the change in velocity in case of insect would have been greater as compared to the motor vehicle so who is right among them he is rahul and what does his observation based on his observation are based on the fact that newton's third law of motion states action and reaction are equal and opposite and law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum before collision is always equal to the total momentum after the collision got it all right let us see the next question now how much momentum will a dumbbell of mass 10 kg transfer to the floor it if it falls from a height of 80 cm take its downward acceleration to be 10 m per second square now what we are going to relate over here is let us see what exactly is given to us in the question the mass of the dumbbell mass represented by small m is given out to be 10 kg height is given to us to be height h is given to be 80 cm to be converted into meters dividing it by 100 we'll get 0.8 meters now because it is falling from a height so we have studied this concept earlier also whenever an object falls down then its initial velocity is considered to be zero the acceleration is given to us to be 10 the acceleration is given to us to be 10 meter per second square right what we need to relate is we need to calculate its momentum right for that we need to know its final velocity first and how we are going to calculate it by the third equation of motion which said that v square is equal to u square plus 2 as this is as per the third equation of motion now putting the values in this equation v we need to calculate u is given out to be 0 so square is irrelevant it will be still 0 plus 2 into a is given to be 10 and the s is basically the height if we are talking about vertical distance it is height or the vertical distance horizontal just distance so it is given to be 0.8 removing the decimal and just cancelling it out i'll get v square is equal to 8 into 2 is 16 taking the square root of 16 i'll get v to be 4 meter per second got it so this is basically the final velocity and now i'll calculate its final momentum so momentum i know is given by the formula m into v mass is given out to be 10 momentum we have to calculate by multiplying it with velocity which we have just calculated to be 4 which comes out to be 40 kg meter per second which is the si unit of momentum so this is basically our momentum got it fine 
So these are a few back questions of the exercise.